We take a second look at the J.P. Morgan Chase trading mistake and the potential political impact of the company's $2 billion blunder. We know that we're better off when there are rules that stop big banks from making bad bets with other people's money. Financial when regulation was clearly on the president's mind today, even during his commencement address at Barnard College in New York. The issue burst back into the spotlight last week after banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase announced that it lost $2 billion in just six weeks. Traveling with the president today, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said, this event only reinforces why it was so important to pass Wall Street reform, why it is so important to fully implement Wall Street reform. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon has been a leading opponent of new regulations under the Dodd-Frank law. You know, I trust you. He spoke Absolutely. Sunday on Meet the Press in remarks taped before the bank announced you know, its massive Washington. losses. I don't like this attitude to just blame everybody. Go get, if you think someone did something wrong, go get those people to do something wrong and blame them. The president's said, Republican said challenger, the, Mitt the Romney, argued earlier this month security. that the regulations will do more harm than good. Is that the small community banks are the ones that have been most hurt. Because again, the burden of regulation falls heaviest on the smaller enterprises that don't have the funds and the personnel to follow all the new government regulations. Hugely important. Meanwhile, the Obama re-election team is trying to tie Romney to public discontent with Wall Street. A new television ad includes interviews with former employees at a Kansas City steel mill that Romney's private equity firm, Bain Capital, acquired. They made as much money off it as they could, and they closed it down. They filed for bankruptcy without any concern for the families or the communities. It was like a vampire. They came in and sucked the life out of us. We sure hope things are The Romney campaign answered with a web video touting Bain's role in bankrolling another steel company, SDI. I think there's a lot of pride in what we've built out here. But SDI almost never got started. When others shied away, Mitt Romney's private sector leadership team stepped in. Building a dream with over 6,000 employees today. Meanwhile, amid the claims and counterclaims, the two campaigns are avidly competing for funds from Wall Street. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, Mitt Romney has received almost $18 million from the finance, insurance, and real estate sector. President Obama has received just under $8 million. Four years ago, he raised $42 million in Wall Street contributions. For more on the politics of Wall Street reform, we're joined by two U.S. senators. Michigan Democrat Carl Levin leads the Senate subcommittee that investigated the financial crisis. And Tennessee Republican Bob Corker is a member of the Senate Banking Committee. Gentlemen, we thank you both. And I'm going to start with you, Senator Levin. Does this $2 billion and maybe bigger loss by J.P. Morgan point to the need for more government regulation? We've already adopted the law. It's uh, called Dodd-Frank. We have language in there, uh, which uh, I actually drafted with Senator Merkley. And so it's very clear in that law that while you're allowed to hedge, you are not allowed to gamble. And the difference between them is that the hedging we specifically allow that banks are permitted to engage in has got to reduce the risk. It's explicit in the law. Uh, and uh, what this bank did in this case by their own uh, data is not reduce the risk. They were dramatically increasing the risk by their own data. That is not permitted uh, by our law. And uh, we hope that the regulators, uh, when they're writing out the uh, regulations to implement the law, uh, will uh, read our law because we think it's mighty clear. Yeah, Senator Corker, what about that? I mean, this J.P. Morgan considered one of the best run investment banks in the country. The fact that they made an error of this size, does, does that point to the need for for regulation. Well, as Carl and I were talking coming in, this has happened at an interesting time because rules are being promulgated. And while I agree with Senator Levin that, that the intent of the legislation that was passed was to keep proprietary trading from occur occurring, I think it's questionable as to whether that's actually what's happened. And I think uh, we both were talking coming in. Uh, this is something we need to have a hearing on and understand. We've been in conversations all weekend with the OCC, the Office of uh, Currency, that basically over the examiner in charge that 
oversees the book of business at J.P. Morgan, and they've been very adamant that even if the Volcker Rule, which the senator was referring to, was fully implemented, that this would have been permitted activity. During the course of the day, uh, we were just talking, they've, they've altered their position and said that this is more complex than they thought, and they really want to hold off. The New York, the Fed has said the same thing, that this is complex, and they really don't know. One thing I can say for sure is that I think J.P. Morgan has been caught off guard. We've been talking with them for some time since this, first, this issue first came up, and their position on this has evolved as far as what has happened. So what I would say, Judy, is uh, I, I agree that prop trading needs to be out the window, but I think it's questionable as to what these trades really were about and were they really trying to mitigate specific risk. There is language in there that talks about well, aggregate uh, issues. And so, you know, I, I think there's more to understand here and, and, and more policy to be developed. Well, I know it's easy to get lost in the details of all this, but Senator Levin, would you agree that the Volcker, so-called Volcker rule that limits the kind of trading banks can do might not have prevented this? No, we, uh, the law is very clear and I got it here with me. It says that you can mitigate risk, you can reduce risk, but if you're going to use the hedging exception, which we wrote into the rule to proprietary trading, it must be to reduce risk of specific assets. These were neither specific. It was the entire portfolio, which is at issue here. Uh, it was a much larger risk than just a specific asset or a specific position. But even more important, by their own data, they were not reducing risk with these trades. They were increasing risk, and the controller of the currency assured me this afternoon that they have not reached any conclusion at the uh, current at the uh, with the, that particular agency as to whether or not uh, the uh, rule is clear enough, and they've not reached a conclusion as to what the facts were. But I read him the law. There's no lack of clarity about the law. You've got to be reducing risk with these trades. That is not what they were doing. Senator Corker, if the, if the argument that I think you're making is that there's a limit to how much more regulation there should be, uh, better to err on the side of less regulation, what's to stop? Well, no, actually, a, a, I wasn't, go ahead. Yeah. I wasn't making that argument. What I was saying is that, and I think the senator would agree, that as the rule has come through, there have been some questions about what it actually means. I think he and Senator Merkley have weighed in, and I think there's a lot of weighing in that's taking place uh, with the control of the currency right now, and I think that's impacting well, things. And so, no, I'm not saying less regulation. What I'm saying is I think the first thing we need to do, let's understand what happened fully well, with this transaction, and then let's see if there are policies in place right now that would have mitigated this if it was proprietary trading, and if not, uh, what is it that we should do? So, no, I'm an open book on this, and I actually, we were talking coming in, I think well, this has happened at a very important time well, uh, in, in this evolution. Let me just take you then quickly, Senator Corker, to what Governor Romney has argued, and that is generally for the dismantling of Dodd-Frank, which is the financial regulatory reform, if he's elected president. Um, it, it, if, if one were to carry that out to uh, a situation where a bank like J.P. Morgan were to continue to do this kind of trading and the bank were to be in much worse shape than this bank is, who's going to bail that bank out? I mean, what, what does this lead to? Well, look, there were, there were, in any bill that's 2,400 pages long, there are some, some redeeming features. One of the things that I spent a tremendous amount of time on with Senator Warner was the resolution authority, where if a bank fails, you put them out of business. You have a mechanism to make that happen. So I think there are lots of good provisions. This bill began in the very beginning to deal with four very specific pieces of bank regulation. Over time, it became a Christmas tree for all kinds of aspirational goals that were not thought out. And I agree with Governor Romney that this has been devastating to the community banking system in our country. In other words, this was built around Wall Street, but the negative right. effect is really on the community banks all across our nation that are in small communities that help cause them to have economic growth. So there's no doubt there's a lot of changes that need to happen in the bill. And uh, I think even Senator Levin off camera would agree with me on that. I'll disagree with you off camera and on camera, as a matter <laughs> of fact. The idea that uh, 
the Governor Romney would uh, repeal Dodd-Frank is, to me, the absolute worst outcome we could he have here. If anything proved the need for regulation of Wall Street, to get the cop back on the beat in Wall Street, it was that recession where we had banks gambling, making bets, proprietary bets, which put them in a very bad position, and we had no choice but to bail out banks. We never want to have to bail out these big banks again. And that's what the problem is. And so you've got to put some regulation in there to control their risky bets. That's what we did in Dodd-Frank. That's what we did with the Volcker Rule. That's what we did with Merkley Levin. And so we want to avoid ever having to bail out banks again. And we better fully implement the language that is in this bill, not water you. it down under pressure of Wall Street. Senator Thank Levin, you. just quickly, though, to put a footnote on that. It, in a situation like this where, where J.P. Morgan was using what are apparently highly rated uh, investment grade bonds. That's what they were dealing in. Can you write rules that are going to prevent any kind of trading, including in this sort of thing? No. We, look, they can do the kind of thing that they did up to the point where they are increasing the risk. You cannot, under this rule, we wrote this rule, you cannot add to the risk and call it hedging. Hedging is reducing risk. There's an exception in our law for hedging. The effort has been on the part of Wall Street banks to turn this into a Christmas tree where you can use that exception to now swamp the rule and do any darn thing you want uh, by uh, calling this an inventory hedge or you're covering uh, your entire group of purchases, which could be thousands and thousands of items. You cannot do it. Look, yeah. this has been resolved. The president signed this bill. The language is clear in this bill. And we want the regulators not to be persuaded by Wall Street lobbyists that they should write this exception to swamp and override the rule. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. We hope to see you again soon. Senator Levin, Senator Corker. Thank you.